Salutations, respected viewers. I am George from Ireland. This video is about the dissimilarities between uh, British and American English. So there is no rhyme or reason to the sequence in which I'm going to speak about these things. Uh, one of the ones that pops out is grey. In British, this word can be spelt with an E in the middle, or indeed an A in the middle, as you prefer. Whereas in the United States, you don't get a choice. Uh, how about this one? Write me back. That's American English. Whereas in Ireland or Great Britain, you'd have to say, write back to me. I remember watching The Patriot and this young man is saying to, uh, to a middle-aged man, I will write Anne. He's going to write letters to her. I will write Anne. The old man's half deaf. But of course, in the British Isles, you'd have to say, I'll write to Anne. If you're going to write Anne, you're going to write her name with an E on the end or not. So um, when children start school, real school, um, in Ireland and Great Britain, it's the age of four, right? Well, in the United Kingdom, it's primary school, we usually say. In the United States, it's elementary school. In the Republic of Ireland, it's national school. But anyway, I know in the Republic of Ireland, we, we mainly speak British English. I know some people go apoplectic if I say that we're British. We're not British citizens, most of us. I am, though. But anyway, I suppose I better count on the English of the United Kingdom um, to avoid any confusion. All right. So in the United States, in some places, there's middle school, whereas middle school is, is very unusual in the UK. It usually doesn't exist. Um, and whereas in the United States, it's junior high as well. All right. So... In the United Kingdom, about the age of 11, primary school would end. Occasionally you go on to the age of 13, and then you go to secondary school. But you might call it a senior school as well. Secondary school is a more common way to say it. Ah, right. Now, in the United States, logically, a public school is publicly funded. That's for everybody. Um, whereas in the United Kingdom, uh, public school is open to the public who can pay. I know in the United States, people rightly say private school if it is private and involves fees. Um, uh, whereas in the United Kingdom, people rarely say private school. It's not wrong, but they tend to say public school, confusingly. The equivalent of public school in the United Kingdom is state school, as in it's controlled by the state, paid for by the state. You might say, what? The UK isn't divided into states, like the, U the United States is 50 states. Well, kind of is, you could say. Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland and England. Or are they countries? Are they, are they nations? Call them what you will. Or indeed the UK state as a whole however you want to see it, but that's what state schools means, as in controlled by the government. Um, now, these um, public schools in the United Kingdom, i.e. fee-paying, are sometimes called independent schools. It's very confusing, um, several different words for the same thing. Independent as in they're independent of the government. Well, they are subject to some regulation, but they're more independent than state schools are. So I know in the United States people um, start off um, in... Uh, well, there's um, first grade and goes up to the second grade, third grade, and, and so on. Um, in the United Kingdom, people don't say it this way for years. You arrive at school at the age of four, and that's called reception that year. And after that is year one, year two, year three, and so forth. We don't actually say first year, second year, third year. No, no year one, two, three, four, five, all the way up, up to and including year 13. Right. I know in the United States, there's kindergarten as well. Now, in the British Isles, people sometimes say kindergarten too. Um, what else is there? Um, sometimes they call it nursery, as in for children over the age of six months, so long as they're off the boob, and nursery and kindergarten um, are coterminous. I know in the United States people often say preschool. People don't say that in the British Isles. Um, let me see. There are play centres in the United Kingdom, which are largely the same thing as kindergarten. That's another point. Centre in British English is R before the E. Whereas I know in the United States, it's E before the R. So British has taken the, the French spelling for centre and just continues to spell it that way, even though pronounce it centre. Um, uh, right. In the United States, there's a theatre. and the UK, there's a theatre. The United States also has a movie theatre, whereas we'd say cinema. Now, we don't usually say movie. We usually say film. Um, uh, it surprised me at the Oscar, the way they say... Well, they say best picture, actually. But I've heard of American schools teaching film studies. I thought, well, as you're American, wouldn't you say movie studies? Or cinematography, something like that. Yeah, the, the cinema in the United States appears to be only for the, the art of filmmaking. 
not the place where they are shown. Um, okay, so write me back. I was going to point that one out, but I've largely done that already. Write back to me. Ah, we have a zebra crossing. The white stripes on the black road, and that's where uh, pedestrians could walk across. I know the United States is a crosswalk. Um, so we've got three lights. Well, certainly for the traffic, we've got the red, the amber, and the green. In the United States, I know you have the you have just the red and the green. Walk, don't walk. Oh, well, you have yellow, we call it amber. Here it's, it's well, not here, in the, in the British Isles, it's closer to amber. We don't have the words walk, don't walk. I suppose it's assumed people know what they're doing. Ah, there's another one. I went to American school when I was little, and I said math like everybody else. The whole word is mathematics. And I arrived in the United Kingdom, and I carried on saying math stubbornly. But after a few years, I unintentionally found myself saying maths for that subject. Okay, mathematics ends in an S. But if you're going to abbreviate it, do you have to put on the S or not? Anyway, in the British Isles, people do. Ah, where do people answer a call of nature? Um, so going to the bathroom. In the British Isles, this must include, there uh, must be a bath in the bathroom. But uh, obviously people don't want to refer to directly to the thing they need to do in there because it is unpalatable. Um, so I'd say, well, we don't have one because there's no bath, there's no bathroom. Um, but people might actually get your meaning if you're an American, the United Kingdom say, oh, I know what the person really needs. Restroom, we never say that one, I'm not going to rest. So that's a euphemism. It's polite to the point of dishonesty. Um, washroom, again, we never say that one. But American English is spreading abroad. I met a Belgian woman who was asking for the washroom because I realized why she's saying that. Um, or I knew an old British woman say, well, do you need a wash after a long car journey? I realized what she's suggesting. So there, uh, the polite and pucker way to say it in the United Kingdom would be lavatory, possibly loo. Oh, there's one beginning with a T. I don't even want to say it. T-O-I-L-E-T. -E I know people wouldn't say that in the, in the United States, but that's more like for the physical, the object, which would be your throne. Um, but it could be meaning that this actual room. Um, there's all sorts of slang words, like an island saying jacks. I don't know why we got that one from. Um, and Thomas Crapper's invention, because of course Thomas Crapper was the plumber who helped to invent the lavatory. And I believe um, he unintentionally gave his surname or part of it to this uh, invention, the flush lavatory. Public convenience, if it's out on the street or whatever, <clears throat> a public one, usually you have to pay. WC, well, that's the same as in short for water closet. At least it's not an earth closet. I've seen those in Romania. Um, so that's that. Anything else I was going to point out about that one? Possibly not. Something came to me but slipped my mind subsequently. All right. In the United States, calling uh, someone who you're friendly with or maybe just meeting someone in an informal situation, buddy. I think that's only for a man. Um, in, in the United Kingdom, we mate. Um, um, particularly in the southern half of the country, or else pal. And um, pal might be more common in the northern half of the country, especially Scotland. So, uh, guys. Guys only means men, I think. But sometimes in the British Isles, I've heard of people say that to include women, or indeed lads, but that's often um, young men. Or sometimes I've heard people using lads for a mixed sex group, and I think, no, that's wrong. It's strictly males only. Um, so lad is a young man, but it might suggest other things about his attitude, that he's a bit like a jock, or he's perhaps a bit macho, chauvinistic, something like that, hard drinking and um, using bad language. It's, it's not opprobrious, and um, so um, some youths might be proud to be called a lad. I'll talk about their laddish behaviour. Read lads mags, so things like lads culture. Their magazine's like Loaded and FHM, okay? So it's... um about, I suppose, assertive heterosexuality and machismo. Um, so bloke is another word for any man or boy, I suppose. And again, that's more from the, the southern part of the United Kingdom. Chap is a bit old fashioned and upper class, just meaning a man. Occasionally I've even heard chapess. I use that word myself, being tongue in cheek, because it's anachronistic and it was always um, rare. Geezer, meaning a man. But again, that's, um, that's from Southern England, and it's a, it's a cockney word, as in working-class Londoner. I don't hear that one very much anymore. There's a, there's a band called The Shaman in the early 90s, and they had a song, Ebenezer Good, which was very naughty, because 
Ebenezer Good, E's are good. It was meant to be E as in ecstasy tablets, E's are good. So there's a guy called Ebenezer, he is the main geezer. So the main geezer is like the boss, the important one, the person you need to know. Okay, gaffer as well, but then gaffer's more like a boss again, like on a construction site, the foreman on a building site. Um, so, um, yeah, we don't send, say educator for a teacher or anything like that. We just say, well, he or she is a teacher or whatever, or anybody who works in tertiary education could be a lecturer. So the title professor isn't given out so freely in the British Isles as in the United States. Assistant professor doesn't exist. People lecturing at universities, well, this is a um, cursus honorum, and they're going up the ladder. They might serve as a reader, be a, um, a junior lecturer, a senior lecturer, or things like that. Sometimes they're called a fellow or a junior research fellow. They have all sorts of titles, but very few of them get to be a professor. So uh, we um, talk about exams a lot, um, and not tests are less important or less serious um, when you're doing your education. So words for women, we have the word bird for a, a young woman, which is not rude, but it's not um, uh, respectful either. Wouldn't say in a, in a formal context, in a work situation. I know women who sometimes refer to themselves as birds, a classy bird and things like that. Um, chick, but I think that's much the same as in the United States, particularly a, a young woman, suggests that she's uh, nubile. Again, not insulting, but not something which is honorific. Doll, people say that in Scotland sometimes, for any young woman, or indeed hen, they say in Scotland. You can hen, I mean, do you know, young woman, if a man is speaking to her. Um, can is to know. All right. Then um, various terms about um, socioeconomic status. I know that in the southern part of the United States, well, the erstwhile Confederacy, not, not in California so much, I don't think, they're rednecks, um, but there's um, was this opprobrious term has undergone reclamation, particularly, particularly due to the um, comedian Jeff Foxworthy in the early 90s. Check your neck and hick is chic. Um, and calling people white trash, which I assume was insulting. Um, and who wants to be trash or trailer trash if they're li living in trailer parks? So there are various uh, words which um, denote class prejudice in the United Kingdom. Quite a stratified society, very class conscious, and it very much relates to accents. So chav, this emerged, I first heard it in 2002. People saying chav or chava um, for a, um, a lower class person, not just working class, I suppose, because working class actually work, but perhaps it means more like the underclass as in people are permanently on benefits or welfare, as you might say in the United States, um, petty criminals wearing Burberry, meant to be hanging around shopping centers as a shopping mall, um, uh, drinking white lightning and other low cost alcohol and behaving in a boorish manner. So uh, they'd like to wear um, casual sportswear, shell suits. Shell suits was thought to be the uniform of denizens. Um, there are various theories that it comes from the um, Romani word chavni, meaning child. Or so there's a town called Cheltenham. There's a posh girls' school, Cheltenham Ladies' College, and they called some boys from around there Cheltenham Average, as in chav. Or people saying it stands for council house at violent. So the United Kingdom is divided into counties. There's a county council everywhere, a city council everywhere, and they pay to build low cost housing, which they rent out very cheaply to people on modest incomes. These were council houses or council flats. A flat is an apartment. Anyway, in the 1980s, the government under Thatcher started selling those off, so people got to own them. So very few people live in council houses or council flats. Until the 80s, about 50% of the population did. Now it might be as little as 10% of the population. They're the people on the lowest incomes. So um, if saying CHAV, council house and violent, is... Uh, an insulting say, thing to say about the person, degrading this person because of his or her um, income on, and suggesting they're a criminal. So there's some bigotry around this. Some people are sneered at because of their um, uh, income and their social status. Oik, that's a bit old fashioned. Oik being, is it, is it the underclass or is it just any working class person? So some of the bourgeoisie in the upper class had this um, contemptuous attitude towards those who are less fortunate than themselves, pleb, from the Latin word plebeian, um, and again to be a working class person. Obviously there are appropriate terms for middle class and upper class people, like toff or snob, but snob is more to do with the attitude. 
saying someone is toffee-nosed. Um, okay, plebage, uh, was for pleb, or just lebage, uh, um, uh, dropping the P. In Ireland, it used to be gurrier a long time ago, but I think that's for an urban working class person. Uh, well, there was culture for someone from the countryside, suggests they're a country bum, bumpkin and very uncouth. But culture, well, Dubliners would call just about anybody a culture if he's from outside Dublin. Or a long time ago in Ireland, it was a laner because of the main streets of the town and the lanes, alleyways, where the really ramshackle housing lives and children who didn't look cared for, who hardly got washed. They came from families of a dozen children. They had scarce enough to eat. They would sometimes call laners contemptuously. So um, anyway, there's, this is one of the more mm, disagreeable aspects of life in Ireland and Br Great Britain is um, class animosity. So people say all right in the United Kingdom, quite a lot to be a bit like okay, or um, that's enough, things like that. But uh, if you're a Cockney, that's a working class Londoner, pronouncing it more like all right, um, the R turns into a W and the double L d disappears already. So all right becoming all right. Um, so I remember reading Midnight Express in which there's a young British guy brought into this prison in Turkey and um, Billy Hayes, the American guy, meets him and this uh, British ad adolescent saying, oh, why, oh, why? And Billy Hayes is very impressed by how self-assured this 15-year-old is. So I told her about Cockney accents quite a lot of the time, but uh, they're not as pronounced or as widespread as they once were. They were all over Southeast England. Um, so people have been adopting Chafakan for the last 20 years or so. That's as in even white youths uh, adopting a somewhat Afro-Caribbean accent. Um, or maybe the en bourgeois of more, more people, things like that. Uh, and even the Cockney accent perhaps is less pronounced than it used to be. If you want to hear it done badly, watch Mary Poppins, that 60s film starring Dick Van Dyke, the American actor who um, uh, infamously absolutely murdered the Cockney accent, just did it so badly. They just should have let him do it in his American accent. Just put one line into the script saying he's an American guy living in London. Right, that's fine. And he can speak as he usually does, rather than just getting it so, getting it so wrong. If you can't do it properly, don't do it at all. Um, and notably in that, that film was obviously written in Hollywood. There's a song, Let's Go Fly a Kite. And British people are singing this. Of course, Britishers would say, let's go and fly a kite, okay? They wouldn't do a double verb. Go fly has to be go and fly. We're two, two, two separate things. We're going, then we're flying it. Um, other, other minor things I noticed saying real fast rather than really fast. We think, but that's an adverb. You have to say really or real nice. So it has to be really nice because um, really has to be an adverb and a nice is the adjective. We are not doing a double adverb here. Sorry, we're not doing a double adjective here. So that's that. These are my uncollected thoughts and some of the dissimilarities between British and American English. You can, find, you can tell that I find this perennially fascinating, which is why I'm always observing and noting down these minor distinctions.